Let's get back to building our full stack application in .NET, BugPorter. So last time we introduced BugPorter, created our Azure Functions project, and stubbed out our first function to report a bug. So this time, we're going to actually implement our report bug function, and we've split up the work to do that into another sprint. Now that we're getting into implementing our domain, let's discuss how we want to organize our application. So for this application, I want to apply vertical slice architecture. And with this architecture, our application is going to be organized into cohesive feature slices. So for example, we're going to have a feature slice for reporting a bug, and everything related to reporting a bug is going to live within that slice. A few benefits of vertical slice architecture off the top of my head are that things that live together are going to change together. And just by looking at the folder structure of our application, we're going to have a high level understanding of the entities and use cases that make up our domain. Another benefit is that adding another feature down the road won't require us to go through and change a bunch of layers. I have a whole series on vertical slice architecture if you'd like to learn more about it, but we're going to implement it here as well. So the first thing we're going to do is stub out some kind of query class where we can create a GitHub issue from a reported bug. And we're just going to stub this out for now. Later on in this part, we're going to actually connect to a GitHub repository and create an issue. So that being said, in our application, let's add a new folder for features, which is going to contain all of our different feature slices. Now in our features folder, let's add a folder for our first feature slice. We want to support the use case of reporting a bug. So we're going to create a folder called report bug. So let's create another folder called GitHub, which is going to contain all of our GitHub logic related to reporting a bug. And in this folder, finally, let's add a class for our query to create a GitHub issue. So we'll call this the create GitHub issue query. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Post edit interruption. So I consistently call this the create GitHub issue query, but this is not a query. We're not getting data. We're creating data. So technically we should call this the create GitHub issue command. So just by convention, something that mutates state should be classified as a command. Something that just retrieves data should be classified as a query. Anyways, for now, throughout this video, I'm going to be referring to this as a query, but it should be a command. We'll fix that at the end. Anyways, let's get back to it. So we ultimately want to execute this query to create a GitHub issue. So let's add a method to execute. It'll be async since we're going to hit the GitHub API. For now, we're just stubbing this out. So all we're going to do is log in here. Let's get a logger injected through the constructor. In the beginning, we'll log creating GitHub issue, and then we'll actually create the GitHub issue. For now, we'll just comment this since we're just stubbing. And then at the end, we'll log successfully created GitHub issue. Currently, we have no return type or any parameters on this function. So let's take a look at the GitHub issues API to understand what the parameters to this function might be and understand what we might return from this function. So pretty straightforward to create an issue, we'll at least need a title for the issue. And we can also pass a body parameter, which we'll use for the issue description. So in our report bug feature slice, let's create an object that'll describe that input. So we're going to call this new bug because this is a bug that hasn't been created yet. We want to create it and turn it into a GitHub issue. Based on the GitHub issue API, we'll need to pass some kind of title to create an issue. We'll call this the bug summary. So we'll add a summary property here. And we also need to pass a body to the GitHub issue. We'll call that the bug description here. So we'll have a description property as well. And for now, these properties can just be read only because at the moment, we don't have any reason to change them or set them. So we'll make this object immutable and we'll take parameters through the constructor. And finally, let's take this new bug object as a parameter to our query. Now back to the GitHub issue API, looking at the response schema, we also get the issue title and body back for the created issue. And we also get some identifiers for the issue as well. So there's an ID field, and there's also a number field. But in our application, we're actually going to use the number field as the ID instead of the actual ID field. And the reason for that is the number field is what's actually used to query the issue from the GitHub API. So from that perspective, the number field is going to be more useful as our identifier. So based on that response, let's create a response object for our query. So in our report bug feature, Let's add another object. We'll call this reported bug because it's going to be the bug that we reported to the GitHub issues API. 
The key difference with this object is it's going to have an ID field with the issue number that the GitHub API assigned to the issue. Let's also have a summary property, which will contain the issue title and a description property that'll contain the issue body. And these can be read only. So our object is not mutable and we'll take all these parameters through the constructor. Finally, back on our query, let's add the reported bug object as our return type. And for now, we can just stub out a value for the reported bug that we're going to return. We'll give this an ID of one and some kind of title and a description. And now we at least have something to return from our query. While we're here, let's do some logging enhancements too. So on this final log line, we could pass the ID of the created bug. So we'll add an ID parameter and pass in the reported bug ID. Anyways, now that we have our query stubbed out, we can hook it up to our report bug Azure function and test it out. So let's get our query injected through the constructor. And then when our function executes, let's first instantiate a new bug that we want to report. We can just hard code the bug summary and description for now. And finally, let's report this bug. So we'll get a reported bug back and we'll use our create GitHub issue query, execute that, pass in our new bug. And just for testing purposes, let's pass the reported bug as the response to our function. Lastly, if we want to inject our query into our function, we're going to have to register an independency injection. So in our function startup, let's take our builder services and we can just add this as a singleton and let's register our create GitHub issue query. And let's test this out. So with our app running, let's go into Postman and let's make a post request to the report bug function. As we can see in Postman, we get a 200 response with our reported bug sent back. And looking at the logs, we can see that we executed our create GitHub issue query. So with that, we have successfully stubbed out our create GitHub issue query. Let's commit these changes and let's close out our story and take on our next story. So next up, we are going to implement our report bug API schema. So rather than hard coding the bug that we want to report, we want to pass the bug that we want to report through the body of our post request to our function. So that being said, we'll have to create request and response objects for the report bug function. And we want separate objects here instead of just using our new bug and reported bug objects in our report bug feature slice, because these request and response objects are going to define the contract between any client and our API. So in our functions folder, let's add a class for the report bug request and another class for the report bug response. So on the report bug request, when a client reports a bug, they're going to send up the bug summary and the bug description. So we're going to have string properties for both of those. And moving over to the report bug response, we're going to respond with the ID of the reported bug as well as the summary and description of the reported bug. So let's create string properties for each of those pieces of data. Now that we have our schema objects, let's use those in the report bug function. So we're going to return a report bug response. And to populate these properties, we can just map over the reported bug that we got back from our create GitHub issue query. And for the report bug request that the client sends, that's going to come through the post request body. So to get that passed to our Azure function, we can just replace this HTTP request parameter. Instead, make this parameter our report bug request. And Azure functions will map the post request body to this request parameter. And lastly, we can use our report bug request now to populate the new bug that we want to create a GitHub issue for. And to really test the request and response end to end, we should go back to our create GitHub issue query. And instead of hard coding the reported bug summary and description, let's instead use the same summary and description from our request. So now when we test this out, the same data that we pass into our function will get returned. So in Postman, let's add a raw body with a type of JSON and let's open up a JSON object and define a summary and a description. And looking at the response as expected, we get the same data that we passed into the function. So all of our mapping seems to be working as expected. So with that, our API schema looks good. Let's commit these changes and back to the board. Let's close out our story for the API schema and bring in our last story to connect to the GitHub issues API. And to interact with the GitHub API, we're not going to be spinning up our own HTTP client. Instead, we're going to use OctoKit, which is the official client SDK for the GitHub API. And using OctoKit, we'll be able to create a GitHub issue. Looking at the documentation, 
it's pretty darn easy. So back on our project, let's manage NuGet packages and search for Octokit and install that. So in our create GitHub issue query, we're gonna need a GitHub client from Octokit injected through the constructor. Then we'll have to instantiate an Octokit new issue with the data for our issue, which we'll map from our new bug parameter. So our bug summary will map to the issue title and our bug description will map to the issue body. And now all we have to do is create our issue with the GitHub client. So we'll take that GitHub client, get into the issue client and create a new issue. To create a new issue, we have to pass in the owner and name of the repository we wanna create an issue in. For now, we'll just hard code this to my bug port of repository. So the owner is me, Singleton Sean, and the repository name is bug porter. Now that we got our issue back from the GitHub client, we can map that issue to our reported bug object. So as we mentioned previously, bug IDs are gonna map to issue numbers, not issue IDs. So we'll take the created issue number, which we need to convert to a string. And the reason I made the ID property a string in the first place is because down the road, instead of interfacing with GitHub, we might wanna interface with another issue reporting platform, such as Jira, where issue IDs are not numbers, they're strings. So for flexibility, let's keep the reported bug ID as a string and just convert the GitHub issue number to a string. Finally, as expected, the created issue title will map to our bug summary and the created issue body will map to our bug description. Let's clean this up a little bit. Let's move the reported bug instantiation to our return clause. And instead of logging the reported bug ID, let's log the created issue number. Next up, if we wanna use the GitHub client to create an issue, we're gonna to have to register it in dependency injection. So in our function startup, let's add a singleton for our GitHub client, which we can just instantiate here. We also need to provide this product header value, which we pass in a user agent to identify our application with the GitHub API. So we'll just call this bug porter API. And lastly, the fun part, we're gonna to have to pass some kind of credentials to our GitHub client so that we can authenticate with the GitHub API and actually create our issue. So for now, I'm not gonna use a bot. I'm just gonna use my personal GitHub account. So to create a token to authenticate with GitHub, we're gonna to have to log in the GitHub and go to github.com slash settings slash tokens. And here we'll be able to generate a new token. So let's do that. And we're gonna to have to re-authenticate since this is a sensitive action. Let's specify the note for our token as bug porter API, because of course that's where we're using the token. We'll set the expiration as no expiration for now so that we won't have to generate a new one. And the only scope we'll need to create an issue is public repo under the repo section. So with that, let's generate our token and copy that generated token. And we want to put that token in our local.settings.json, which we are not committing to source control. So we're not going to be committing this sensitive token, which we do not want to become public. So in this settings file in the values object, let's add a key for GitHub underscore token and paste in our token as the value. And now back in our function startup, we ultimately want to pass that token to our GitHub client. So let's get that token out of our configuration by taking our builder and getting the host builder context, digging into configuration and getting that value that we've keyed GitHub underscore token. And now we can take our GitHub client and set the credentials to new credentials and pass in our GitHub token. And that'll be all it takes to authenticate with GitHub. So let's run our app and test this out. So let's put in a good summary and description and post this. And as we can see in the response, our issue was successfully created. So let's go over to our repository and go over to issues and boom, our issue was created. The title and description of the issue matches what we posted to our function. Now, the last issue we have is that we're hard coding the repository owner and name. And ideally, I would like to specify these values at the top of our application in a configuration file rather than hard coding them. So in our GitHub folder, let's create an object that'll hold our repository options, such as the repository owner and name. We'll call this the GitHub repository options. And we'll have two properties, one for the repository owner, another for the repository name, and that'll allow us to identify our repository. 
So now we just need to inject these options into our query. And we're going to register these options using the .NET options pattern. So that means we're going to have to inject these options as I options for our GitHub repository options. And finally, instead of hard coding the repository owner and name, we can grab those off of our options object. So now let's put the values for those options in our local settings JSON configuration file. So we'll have the GitHub repository owner as me, Singleton, Sean, the GitHub repository name as bug porter again. So we're going to stick with using that repository. And now in our function startup, we can register our GitHub repository options. So to register options, we want to take our builder services and specify that we're configuring the GitHub repository options. And we can configure these options via a callback that gives us the options we want to configure and register. So on those options, we want to set the owner to our GitHub repository owner in our configuration and the name to the GitHub repository name in our configuration file. And lastly, we're digging into this builder git context configuration a lot. So let's just extract that to a reusable variable at the beginning of our function startup. And now this is much simpler. We can just reference this configuration variable. So let's run our app and test this out in Postman. Let's pass in a different summary and description this time. We get a success response back from our function. Let's go over to our repository and see if the issue was created, which it should have been. And as we can see, it was successfully created. So with that, we've connected to the GitHub Issues API. Let's commit these changes in Git. And finally, let's close out our final story of the sprint for connecting to the GitHub Issues API. And with that, we've completed our small sprint where we made some pretty good progress. And lastly, here I am again post edit. Let's rename the create GitHub issue query to be the create GitHub issue command because it's not a query, it's a command. And let's go through and refer to it as a command throughout our application. Pretty dumb mistake, but an easy fix at least. So just to summarize, we created a command so that we could create GitHub issues from bugs that get reported. And we hook this command up to the report bug function where we take the bug to report through the post body of the request and we respond with the reported bug. So still have to plan the next sprint and what we're going to be doing next time. But who knows, this is good progress. We might get into the client side of the full stack earlier than I expected. Anyways, hopefully you can apply these concepts to build out your own domain logic in your own .NET API.